This is my goal, the max key. With the clock always ticking, I want to do it in the shortest gameplay time possible as an Iron Man. Because I chose to be an Iron Man, this little helmet next to my name prevents me from trading everybody or using the Grand Exchange, so I have to get all items myself. Since pathing is essential on an Iron Man, a lot of theory crafting and planning goes into this max cape run, and thankfully we have a great guide to follow. Last episode, we did a fat amount of quests and ended the episode with 3 hours of magic training in the magic training arena. I hate to admit it, but today, we're going to be putting ourselves through the same amount of questing, only this time, we're going to be doing even harder quests. One of my goals this episode will be to unlock Fossil Island, as there's a lot of Iron Man content in that place. Bone Voyage is a quest that unlocks it, and one of the requirements is 100 kudos, so I'm going to be unlocking that by talking to the guy upstairs with my amazing quest knowledge that I spaceboarded through and have no clue what I'm saying, and he's going to shower me in XP lamps and kudos. Put my XP lamp on Herbler since I'm an Iron Man by the way. And now starting the quest at 67 hours played, while this quest is a huge goal for the account due to the unlocks, I still have a million other quests to do, so it will probably be a while before I complete it. The Giant Dwarf This quest is absolute dog shit. The guy told me to complete this earlier, but I got mad and rage quit it. However, I'm now at a point in the guide where it's come to reality that I have to complete it. The problem with this quest and why it's so awful to do, especially on an Iron Man, is that there's a specific step in it where you want to please the dwarves and do a job for them, so they send you out to get a random quality of ores, such as 10 iron ores or 5 mithril ores, you don't really know, it's different for every account. All the ores are accessible for purchase inside the blast furnace, so it's not that bad. However, the problem is after that. Once you do a good job bringing them the ores, they want you to get bars. And because I'm only 36 smithing at the time of this quest, I cannot make gold or mithril bars. So if they ask me to do that, I have to decline it and then redo the step over again. It's a pain in the ass. The thing is, when I rage quit earlier in the account, I was streaming this and I accidentally accepted a mithril bar job, leaving me to get 10 mithril bars, which I physically cannot make. I had 18 minutes to do it and the timer didn't go down unless I was logged in. So you can imagine it was very easy to rage quit completely. But alas, the next day, after a good night's sleep and calming down a bit, I came back ready to finish this quest off once and for all. And the ending point to one quest is a starting point to another. Now I have to start Forgettable Tale. Crafting is a really important grind in Iron Man since it unlocks teleports such as Ring of Dueling or Games Necklace, and especially Dig Site Pendants which you need to teleport to Fossil Island, so I mined myself some sand and bought some soda ash from the shop to train crafting for a bit. And immediately after all my sand, I decided to cut all my gems from Winter Taunt that I could. Here's 40 crafting and 850 total. I swear I wasn't drinking, but I somehow found myself in Canifist during this clip, so I guess I'm finishing Shades of Morton now. I do need to unlock myself fairy rings to teleport around RuneScape easier, so I found myself doing Lost City now. The boss fight? Piss easy. I'm grabbing myself a lot of Dreaming Branches, and I'm about to show you guys why. In Fermi Trials, there's this one boss fight where you're not allowed to bring in any gear or weapons. However, you can bring in rings, so I made myself two Ring of Recoils, and I jumped right into it. This is where the first Dreaming Branch comes to use, because I'm allowed to bring in the branch and a knife, and I can craft the staff while I'm inside the arena. This gives me a better weapon to kill him with. And since I don't have overheads, I was kind of nervous starting this fight, but it turns out the Draymond Staff it was actually pretty easy. I also happen to have a Strength Potion that I got from a random event. After killing him 3 times, I'm finally allowed to let him kill me and progress with the quest, however I will not be completing this quest until later on. For Barrow's Gloves, I have to rescue a dinner party for 8 different people, making it kind of like doing 8 little mini quests, but there's still actual quests. Here I am completing 3 of them. Time to finally finish up Lost City, and get my ass to start Fairy Tale Part 1. And while in Drainer, I decided that now was a good time to buy a bunch of seeds so that I can start birdhouses as soon as I unlock Fossil Island. And before leaving the premises, I ran slightly north to finish up Vampire Slayer. I got every single bone for this quest passively while doing other quests, but here I am for the first time ever completing Rag and Bone Man 1. That's right, on every other account I've ever had, I've never actually completed this quest due to everyone saying how bad this series is. 
Teleporting back to Ferox with only 80k coins to my name, as an Iron Man who isn't allowed to trade anyone else, and has to make all his gold pieces himself, it was time for me to make some bread. I did some Last Man Standing, which is a PvP minigame that anybody with 750 total and 30 quest points can enter. Here, we kill some players and get points, which can be used in a shop in actual runescape to buy rune arrows for GP. This normally would not be worth it at all in my opinion, comparative to blackjacking. However, for the sake of the speedrun, due to my amazing PvP skills and help from friends, I found this method to be just barely worth it. So now, with 14,000 rune arrows in my inventory, it was time to see some hard-earned cash. And how convenient. Since I'm subscribed to JCW and like this video, I found somebody to insta buy my rune arrows as soon as I'm selling them. You guys should do the same. I have my option as left click sell 5 at a time, but I realized literally 10 seconds into this clip that selling to the shop is way easier than I expected, so you'll notice me double clicking and selling 10 at a time a lot. 19 minutes later, finally wrapping up my sales, I made 2.5 mil cash on these rune arrows, and I saved some for outking during questing later on since we need some magic XP as well. It felt nice to be rich in an Iron Man for once. Now that we have GP, it's time to finally take a trip to unlock Fossil Island. Now, I don't want to turn this video into something political, but I have to mention this because this part of the quest is just so bad. Sailing was voted in as a new skill, and yet this is the experience that we have with sailing. I mean, every account I've done this quest on, I've raged at this part. I spam click the arrows and it works only when it wants to, so I'm always stuck doing this longer than I should be. But I guess this is a skill we should all look forward to, right? Thankfully, we do eventually arrive at the island, and what's cool about this is you have to build your own bank for the first time, so I brought my supplies with me to do that. Doing my first birdhouse run, I decided to mine a lot of volcanic ash since it's very close nearby. Volcanic ash is used to make Ultra Compost, which we'll be using for the entirety of the account. Not only does Ultra Compost prevent your crops from dying less, but it also gives extra loot. So like for example, when I plant herbs, it may give me an extra herb or two when looting versus Super Compost. Of course, being a speedrun account, we're going to tick manipulate everywhere we can. In another series, I explained 1.5 tick woodcutting, where you chop a log every 3 ticks, but you trick the game into giving you two rolls, essentially giving you a log on an average of 1.5 ticks. This mechanic of getting two rolls also works for mining volcanic ash. At this point, I don't really know what I'm doing, because the volcanic ash degrades so quickly and there's only three next to each other, sometimes even two if I want to be really picky and not run far. But like I said, I'm able to 1.5 tick mine it, and here's why. This old school 2007 game has a mechanic called Arrival Delay. Arrival delay only applies to certain objects, and when an object does have an arrival delay, it allows me to get two rolls instead of one. Let's take a look at a great example of this. Planted teak trees on Fossil Island. Notice how I can click the tree for one square away, and if I try moving my character after I swing my axe, I don't move at all. This is because of the arrival delay. This proves that this is something 1.5 tick would work on, because the arrival delay is tricking the game into giving me a second roll. Meanwhile, look what happens when I do this exact same thing on an object without arrival delay. Notice how my character jumps right off. This confirms that there's no arrival delay on this, and therefore I cannot get two rolls. And one final time as a comparison for those in the back. As luck would have it, Volcanic Ash does have an arrival delay, so that's why you see me 1.5 taking all of this. I don't want to do too much ash at this exact moment, because I'm still low mining and the amount of ash you get scales with higher levels. So for now, I will stop just over 500 ash banked. Next, I'm doing some birth orb quests and finishing Death Plateau, immediately jumping into Troll Stronghold. Troll Stronghold is actually a pretty scary quest. Every time I do this quest, I'm already high HP or 43 prayer for protection prayers, and this time I didn't have either, so I didn't really know what I was going to walk into. I mentioned something similar to this before, but I tend to treat every quest as a little jigsaw puzzle meant for 4 year olds. Because let's face it, RuneScape quests aren't really a challenge, they're just an annoyance. Well, I wouldn't recommend any 4 year old to ever try this quest with low HP and prayer, because I get fucked, and here's a Twitch clip proving it. How do I safe spot this guy? I obviously need to make sure I don't fucking die. 
<gasps> what? You guys can trust me when I say the run back was not fast. But fast forwarding, here I am completing it. I then went to Lumbridge and finished the Lost Tribe. This unlocked me a bone crossbow and bone bolts which will be useful not too far from now. I came back to the dungeon to buy my bolts and bow and I made an epic mistake with my hard self earned GP and bought the bolts separately from the packs. Why does that matter you ask? Well 1000 bolts in packs cost me 3k, meanwhile if I were to buy 1000 bolts one by one it cost me 18k. Now that might not sound like much, but when you're a hardworking, self-earned Iron Man like me, especially at these early stages, 15k difference is a lot of GP. I had to go through these Dragon Slayer 1 fights in order to get a map piece to make my way to Elvarg, and if you guys remember my death at Troll Stronghold, I did this part of this quest the same day as that one, and I swear it was just not my day when it came to questing. It takes me about 5-6 to six minutes to get to this final boss, which gives me access to the map piece. After killing it, I grab the key for the chest, and then I find my map piece. Well look what I decided to do to the first map piece. Once again, on stream. Damn right, I outed it. Next, I did Shadow of the Storm since it's amazing early game range levels. The bosses very slow at my combat stats, but it's safe spotable with melee, so it's fine. For this demon, I can attack it with whatever weapon I want, however, the final hit has to be a silver light. So I switched over to my new beer weapon and completed the quest. This got me 1 to 27 range. For Fairy Tale Part 1, there's a part of the quest which is RNG, and you're asked to grab 3 random items and bring it to somebody. I got lucky and was asked for 2 herbs which I got from Winter Tot and Queen Denarda, and a Blue Dragon skill which all I had to do was run to Blue Dragons. This made the remainder of the quest easy, and for once RNG was on my side. Following that, it was time for yet another boss fight, finishing Fairy Tale Part 1 and killing Drew. My low run energy made killing him kind of annoying because the safe spot included me running back and forth. I think there was a more efficient way to safe spot, however I was lazy and didn't look up anything, so I decided to do this slowly unfortunately. With Fairy Tale Part 1 about to be complete, we were so close to unlocking fairy rings which will get us around RuneScape so much easier. While in Draenor, I decided to do a poor sign of interest for a free 1k Slayer XP. While at the Slayer Master since I just completed the quest, I decided to buy a bunch of items that I'll be needing for Slayer later on. And look at this, I accidentally clicked him for a new task and I got assigned Banshees. At this moment, I'm not sure if this will screw me over or help me out later on. Because I do know that overall this Master is not worth doing. Next, I'm finishing up the last bits of Fairy Tale Magic, and then we're basically unlocking a new stage, teleports around all of Gaimanor. It took me a bit to want to return, but I do eventually go back to Elven Mess to finish off a rune pouch, which holds 3 runes in one slot, so that'll prove very useful for just about everything. Finally, I'm going to wrap up one more quest before we start exploring the big ass island of Zaya. We'll finish this episode off with completing Mountain Daughter for some prayer XP. While we finish up this quest, let's look through our gains from last episode versus now. On the left are my stats from last episode, and on the right are my current stats. We got an okay amount of levels this time, but bear in mind that we had massive progress in the sense that we got a room pouch plus 2.5 mil GP made, both of which we got 0 XP or EHP gained. Here's an easier visual for the gains along with the EHP on the side. Our EHP at the end of this episode is 71, meaning we are officially 4 hours behind on our gameplay time. However, that is the life of an Iron Man when you have to get everything yourself, including GP and other items such as room pouches. I can't remember if I told you guys, but I am an Iron Man, so yeah. Anyway boys and girls, TY for watching, as always don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next week where we explore a big ass island named Zaya. Peace out.